Before we get started, sorry about the background noise. You might hear birds or a dog or some yard work going on, but it's super hot and I don't want to close the windows. This is such a quiet, peaceful town. So what you been doing? I bought a Ryzen 8500G APU. It's a strange chip with a mix of Zen 4 and Zen 4C cores with an RDNA 3, same generation as the RX 700 series graphics cards, integrated graphics component. I bought it mostly out of curiosity, but there were some specific things I wanted to test. In this video, I'll talk about the first thing, the video encoder hardware. Unlike that 5700G that I tested a while back, this APU has a pretty strong hardware encoder, and it's capable of encoding H.264, H.265, and AV1. It's capable at some level anyway, but how capable? If it can replace a dedicated GPU for live streaming and recording simultaneously, then it could make the core of an excellent streaming PC. For instance, take this APU, which is the cheapest of the three retail ones, and pair it with one of the cheapest A620 motherboards available. Install minimal and cheap RAM and storage capable of keeping up with the recording bitrate. Grab a pretty basic power supply since the power requirements are so low and you've got a pretty good streaming PC for not too much money. You may have to specifically look for motherboards with enough USB bandwidth to handle the new external HDMI 2.1 capture cards though, so that could change prices. But overall, especially if you scavenge some parts from old systems, you could put together a very cost effective PC. This all assumes, of course, that this APU can handle the work. I didn't use that exact setup, but on screen is what I have my test system built from. And to test, I recorded some gameplay from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the PS5. Some was recorded in performance mode, some in graphics mode, and the point of this video is not to compare the recording quality necessarily, but just to see if the APU can survive certain settings. I'm not a streaming expert either, and I didn't test every permutation of settings and configurations. I hope that what I did test will give you a rough idea of the capabilities of this APU. The internet suggested a CQP20 setting for high quality recordings, but I did see some people also suggest CQP16, so I tried both. Let's look at AV1 recording first. At 4K60, CQP16 mode in the high quality profile immediately overloaded the encoder. The same goes for CQP20. Even recording AV1 at 25 megabits per second, or 25,000 kilobits per second, in CBR in the high quality profile overloaded the encoder. If I took the encoder down to the balanced profile, I could record at CQP20. I tried for about four and a half minutes, the recording was smooth, and the file size was about 1.5 gigabytes. That's pretty huge, but 750 gigabytes of storage will let you record about 37 and a half hours at that rate. I picked that storage size as a reference because it would be like the amount of free space you might have if you bought a single one terabyte drive for your system. I also tried CBR 50 megabits per second in balanced profile and it recorded similarly smooth gameplay at roughly the same file size per minute, 1.3 gigabytes for 3 minutes and 48 seconds of footage. 4K60 and H.265 I could push all the way up to CQP16 and I would be happy recording at those settings if I wanted to save gameplay for editing for later use using a more common format. At first, most of my efforts to record 4K60 and stream 1080p in AV1 at the same time caused immediate encoder overloads, but I did find some settings that sort of worked and some that seemed very stable. 50 megabits per second CBR balanced recording and 6 megabits per second balanced streaming worked well most of the time, but at one point during my test, OBS ramped up the streaming bitrate to 11 megabits per second and caused a lot of stuttering on stream, which also appeared as an encoder overload in OBS, but OBS recovered and the stream got smooth again once it went back to the bitrate that I actually specified. I took the streaming bitrate down to 4 megabits per second and didn't encounter any more of that, although the encoder bitrate for streaming did jump up again the same way, just not as high. Adding a camera or splitting the windows between desktop capture and gameplay didn't seem to hurt performance. It's possible that complex animated overlays would, but I've never set those up and I don't have any to test, so, you know, maybe later I'll come back to that. Streaming and recording together at 1080p for both worked fine, 
and I doubt you would have any issues if you used lower resolutions or stream or recorded at a lower frame rate than what I used. I'm pretty impressed with the performance of this APU. Since my main purpose is recording gameplay, I would be fine with only recording high quality footage in H.265 4K60 without simultaneous streaming or any overlays. If you're building a streaming PC, you might have to do some tuning or make some trade-offs to get it to run smoothly all the time, but maybe not. Another option, if the board you choose has the slots for it, is to add a dedicated GPU like an Intel A380. I'm sure some of you might say that that defeats the purpose, but it adds a new dimension to the discussion too. If you add something like that, suddenly you can record and stream AV1 60 frames per second by using the AMD and Intel encoders in tandem, which reduces the load on each. I tried it, it works really well. If you're planning to use a USB capture card, you can go with a recent AMD laptop and get the same GPU and encoder. You can even find them with an RTX 4000 series card, and unless Nvidia did some naming trickery, those should also give you a second hardware encoder that supports the same AV1, H.265, and H.264 formats. You'd also have a built-in monitor. I'm not a streamer, but this technology is pretty exciting for me. Ever since Shadowplay came out, I've enjoyed recording clips to watch later, or share with friends, and occasionally I've even done some streaming just to small groups to show some people some cool areas in a game or some features or something like that. The more this hardware becomes available, the easier and higher quality that sharing becomes. This may be the most exciting aspect for me of new CPUs and GPUs in the last several years. It has been a pretty boring space as of late. Thanks for watching. I hope this information was helpful to you. Peace.